Today, I'm gonna to show you the easiest way you can create a clot simulation in Blender for beginners. Let's get to it. So here I am in Blender. I'm using version 3.3.1, and I got my screencast keys here on the bottom left so you can see what I click and type. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do a clot simulation in Blender for complete beginners, and this is ideal if you're trying to make a blanket for a bed or just some sort of cloth covering and there's a lot of alternative ways to make it more complex but this will be a very simple setup so first off let's get our default cube and let's go ahead and click x and delete and if you're super beginner you don't even know how to move around make sure you either use your mouse pad or your uh, middle mouse button and click around too. But I'm not gonna spend too much time on like the super little tiny details, but I'm assuming you've used Blender before. And go ahead and do Shift A, Mesh, and let's go ahead and let's do a UV sphere for this one. And we can just shade it smooth really quick. And we press number one, let's do GZ, move it up, right above the red line just like that. And now this will essentially be the thing that is going to catch the blanket. And now for the blank, we're gonna do Shift A, Mesh and Plane, and then I will scale this bad boy up like this. And just depending on how big you want your blanket or your cloth or whatever you're trying to create, then obviously you'd have to readjust that. But for this sake, I'm gonna keep my cloth like this. G, Z, move it up, and you know, just at least a few, few spaces above whatever object you're doing, and then you'll be fine. I can rename this one. Uh, call this cloth right here and spear let's just call this the um, collision did I even spell that right oh well we'll find out so let's go over here to uh, physics properties and now if you never used this before this is essentially where we will create our cloth and also the object that the cloth will collide with so for this the spear we want this to be essentially something that the cloth will land on. So what I think I should do is I'll make the cloth first that we can see the purpose of collision. So first off cloth, if I were to go ahead and just simply click on cloth right here, press space bar, it'll just fall right through. So I'll do shift left air to reset the animation. And if you're in case you're wondering how that works, basically it's an animation and then they go like this. So right now we have the cloth physics on here and then we need something to collide because you can see it goes through the actual uh, spear. So now we click on the spear and let's go ahead and click on collision. Now watch what happens if I just go ahead and do this. You'll notice that it just lays straight flat on it and that's not what we're trying to do. So let's do shift left there, reset our animation or simply drag it back. So now we can click on our cloth or essentially our plane right here and we can tap into edit mode and then you can either add loop cuts manually or you can just right click and hit subdivide. And now you see on the top we have essentially four faces right now. So we can go here and subdivide again. And let's just max this out to let's go to like 10. Now ideally, if you want this to be even more essentially detailed and you want it to be have like a very, very thin like field, then you can right click this, subdivide this again. And now we have even more faces on here. Now just note that the more faces you add, and during animations, if your computer is not up to speed, you don't have like a high-tech one that could easily crash Blender or could just make it like ridiculously slow. So here we have it like this. And if you wanted to, you technically could just uh, E to extrude this and bring it down a little bit. And now you have some sort of thickness. And it's up to you, that's our preference. But uh, now let's go ahead and tab back out into object mode. Press N and then go over to the view. And right now, Actually, let's go to item, and we can see that scale is adjusted, also location and everything. So what I'm gonna do is do a Command A, and if you're using Windows, Control A, and basically I just wanna apply all my transforms. So now, if I do spacebar this time, we can see the cloth is actually landing and it has some sort of formation. So if you personally like this design, then definitely you can keep it, but I don't like it because it looks like, you know, it's a cube cube-like and it's not as deal if you want to have some smooth looking uh, surface. So right off the bat, we could actually right click this shade smooth. And you notice even after shade smooth, it doesn't actually look officially smooth. You can see all these little jagged lines. So the way to do this, we go over to the modifier tab with the little wrench icon, go to add modifier, subdivision surface. 
and if you want to, we can put like two. And if you keep going crazier, you could go to three, but I think two so far fits what I want to do. And now, ideally, this isn't the best because look right now on the bottom of it, all of our cloth is one. It's already in her. It's essentially overlapping, which I don't want that to happen. Unless you want to have like some sort of transparent ghost cloth that can go through each other, definitely. But ideally, in real reality, real world, that isn't really even possible right now. So. First thing we do is make sure we go back to the physics property on the cloth. Make sure we have the cloth, the essential cloth part selected, not the uh, collision or the spear. And go all the way down and you will notice that they will have option, which you can see here, called collisions. Scroll that down and then you'll see this option called self-collision. So now I'll click on this option. Now essentially distance, it just determines how close you want it to be essentially from touching each other. But by default factory setting, it seems like it does already, at least what I'm kind of trying to do, the, the job that I want. So now you can see when I play the animation now, and it doesn't, if I stop it around that same frame, which we just hit space like this, you can see that they aren't touching anymore. And then you can, obviously you can update the distance and the friction, all these other settings if you wanted to play around with this. But for the total state, we'll keep it like this. And now there is still one other thing I did not like and you might not be able to see it on this specific shape, but before we did this sub collision, essentially, and you'll find this if you use a different shape beside the spear, the actual, for example, the spear right here, be like GZ and move up, it might actually end up being literally sticking out. So again, depending on what you're creating, that might that's pretty common depending on the shape. So let me just command Z or control Z this. I right now currently it's not doing that because it's just this which is a perfect thing. But if you're gonna do something with like sharp edges and stuff, it's not gonna work. So the way to fix that is one, go back to your cloth. And then if you go all the way down, you can see here, object collisions distance. So this essentially is above self collision. So if you go to object collisions, and let's just change this to like one meter, so you can I'll exaggerate it so you can clearly see what I'm talking about. When I hit, the space now look at this now it has this sort of distance above the actual objects to where basically it's not going to touch so you can do some cool effects with this if you'd like to but for the sake of it ideally the default setting at 0.015 would work but sometimes if your object is like too sharp on the edges or it's too pointy then you might need to do like you know something a little bit higher like 0 0.1 0 0.2 etc and just play around with this value until you essentially have it perfected to what you want to do and this one, I mean, looks looks fine right there. But ideally, like, you can go back to like a 0 0.015, so something even smaller. And then it'll just play like this, and then keep it down like that. Now, there is a ton of additional settings regarding the cloth simulation and the physics properties. And for the sake of this, tutorial, I just want to keep it fairly simple. And then pretty much this is what will get you started with the basics of the cloth simulation. If you're trying to do something more complex, obviously, you will need to deep dive into each of these and then go ahead and play around with them but just simple things on stiffness damping can definitely change the way the cloth effect appears but ideally this now you can pretty much go in here press one delete this and then add another you can add a cube for example add a collision and then now all of a sudden now you have the cloth it works on pretty much that and that's what i meant when i said these uh, the actual edges click out or they're sticking out so all we need to do here change this and let me go like points let's try point one shift left click go back and now you can see that that distance goes away so again it's all preference and then pretty much once you have your desired effects all you need to do is press zero on your camera and then literally stop it at the keyframe that you want the clock to be and then obviously if you've never done animation just simply hit i and location rotation scale that way the cloth will just be forever at that uh, frame, at least at 72. So let's go back. And I should have actually hit the, um, yeah, right here. So now you know exactly where the frame is that you want the picture or whatever you're trying to create. Then go here. Well, first off, go to the render settings and then, you know, put in your renders and your frame settings. But basically, name this PNG. This is your file name. And then go over to the render. You can choose EV or cycles, and technically most likely cycles if, if you're trying to go 128, and then I'll do like 512, and then basically, you know, add your frame, whatever, and then go here to render image, 
and then you have your cloth. So if you don't like this frame, just readjust it on your animation, run the image again, and there you go, you got your little cloth simulation there. So if you wanna see more advanced deep dive on the cloth simulation and a lot more different effects you can create, definitely let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.